It's time for now get my glue. <laughs> and now here's your hosts, Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Okay, so welcome, folks. This is a special. Uh, we, we've already determined that special is not the right word for it. This is an episode that's a little different than normal. Usually, we relegate that gets my goat to a side feed. It's not even a feed. We just throw it up on the blog, and you can download it from there. And that's www.doonsteef.blogspot.com. That's right. Or you can click the links. Not in the show notes, You were going to say in the show notes. It's yeah. just on the sidebar of the, uh, the main site to find the That Gets My Goat shows. And you can go back through and, and download all the old episodes. But we've run into a bit of a problem. It's kind of gotten our goat. I'm not sure which problem you're referring to. The problem that I'm referring to is the bandwidth oh, issue okay. that we've run into. Apparently, the free account on Box.net only allows you a certain amount of bandwidth. And, and we have exceeded it. That's right. As our That Gets My Goat audience expanded, so did our lack of bandwidth. And now... We have exceeded our bandwidth. And I guess it, it replenishes every month or something like that. So I think you might be able to download stuff on there again. We're fine for November. For the beginning of November. But last month we uh, exceeded our bandwidth and people weren't able. I think you could still stream it, though. You could still just play it right there on your computer. But you couldn't download it for use on your MP3 player or something like that. So anyways, we ran into a bit of a problem. But, but, but can I interrupt just for a second? Hi, this is Rish Outfield. And this is Big Anklevich. Wait, are we are we going to just throw that back onto the start? No, I just figured... Oh, okay. In case strangers had accidentally stumbled upon our voices. <laughs> yes, Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich here with the That Gets My Goat show. Slash Dune Steve, audio fiction magazine. We're doing this for two reasons. One is the uh, bandwidth problem he just mentioned. That's right. Which leads us to a question. But the other reason, I mean, which I think is probably more important, is that right now we're sort of in between episodes. We've decided to do the Broken Mirror stories next, but we're just recording them tonight. So that's going to be a while before they hit the air. And we're putting the rush on those episodes to get them out as soon as possible. But, but this is a placeholder. This yeah. is a, a, a buffer. To, this is a reminder of what's going on. This is an update. This is a... That's right, because we know we're not going to get them done in time for it when we would normally put out our next episode. So this is our next episode. Hey! Right, and it's two birds with one stone. I am really upset about something. I wanted to His get. goat has been gotten. And, and then he must also, have continue on with the bandwidth. Yes, issue. the bandwidth issue. It's gotten our goat. It, it's become a problem. And so we're just wondering what folks think. I, I don't know how many people have actually listened to the That Gets My Goat show. Enough to exceed our bandwidth limits, but... Yeah, we don't have a way of tracking how many people have listened to right, something. Right, because the it free It sends account. us an email when someone has listened for the first time. And that's it. Um, and so we have no idea. It could be hundreds of people. That would be awesome. But it, it probably is just Nigel over and over and over again. <laughs> it's probably just tens of people. And what was the name of the guy that was our very first listener? Mr. John Smith of 223 Crescent yeah, Circle. He actually passed away, correct? Yeah. I think it happened while he was listening to the show because of the utter banality that was evidenced in the show. But that doesn't mean that everyone will experience those same effects. Results not typical. <laughs> okay, well, I, I don't know why I brought him up. I guess I just, I, I missed the guy. He yeah. was our first listener. Uh, you never forget the first be. one, folks. Yeah. But anyways. I'm sorry. So, so That Gets My Goat is a podcast that is just our banter. It happened to be inspired by something that I was upset about. And instead of telling Big over lunch, I said, let's start the, the camera. Let's start the microphone. Microphone. Thank you. Recording. Re yes. Does microphone actually record? Let's start the computer recording. What records? I think the computer does actually record. The microphone just facilitates the sound. But you know what? It's really not that important. The fine points of what does the recording. No, just none say of this what is you're very saying important. And I go said, just on. start it recording. And I will tell you on the air so that other people can experience it. And I had fun doing it, and you had things that you were complaining about, and I decided that it would be a regular weekly show that we would do so that 
if there were people that really enjoy the banter after the stories, they could enjoy that. And I, I don't know. We've done like a dozen episodes, mm -hmm. and I think it's really fun. And yeah. I, I, it's hard to tell with just that email saying one person is listening to it <laughs> right. if people are really enjoying it or if people are listening out of curiosity and abandoning it halfway through or if it's that one guy just <laughs> listening it over and over again but it's obviously enough people to exceed the bandwidth listen to you so, class half full guy uh, i have no idea really what that means but it's enough to lead us to this what should we do with this show obviously if it's killing our Holy smoke, folks. <laughs> okay, actual <laughs> physical evidence of paranormal activity My on the air. My hair <laughs> is standing straight up. A uh, little pee escaped. <laughs> a poltergeist just came out of its freaking den. And what was that that shattered? What? That was a Halloween decoration that we still haven't taken down. It's now taken itself down. It was up above the cupboards, and it just toppled, right? It, Gosh, I'm glad that it happened today when we're still awake. Because if that had happened on a normal night at oh, 1.34 in the morning... That would have freaked you out. I'm now surprised your wife my wife has sleep slept through, through nuclear it. detonation. She can sleep through anything except my voice. I guess so. But in Mexico, where my mom is from, today is Day of the Dead. <laughs> and so today, de los today is the day when the spirits are all dancing around. When the know, freaks come out at night. They're doing the Humpty Dance. They're, they're, uh, some of them still do the Charleston. The, hey, it's your birthday. The the Cabbage Patch. <laughs> the Roger Rabbit. These are, are dances that uh, people who are dead and they don't know they're dead. They do. Holy crap, man. That was that was really <laughs> scary. Uh, it see, it's fell. in the room where we were recording that this happened. Happy Halloween, folks. <laughs> don't piss off the ghosts. <laughs> they, were, they were trying to silence us by pushing that thing over. Yeah, it's just a giant branch that we painted black, and it's the Halloween tree instead of a Christmas tree where it has Halloween-related ornaments that hang from it, and it's supposed to have, like, spider webs on it and stuff. But, yeah, it just fell off. And See, Cthulhu is jealous that you didn't honor him on this day. That was uh, really strange. So that was not supposed to be part of the show, though. So I guess we could move on from there. I'm going to have to clean up that mess I'll, at some I'll, point, I'll too. help you. If you want to stop and do it right now, we can well, do that. Well, we, we can finish. Okay, so as you were saying, we're at a crossroads. We don't know what to do with that gets my go. Enough people like it that you know we're going to continue to do it. But in what capacity? Yeah, we were considering just adding it on as kind of a second show that would uh, hit the uh, airwaves in between our regular shows. And you guys could just get it on your regular feed. That might cause us other problems, like we'd run out of our storage space that we're allowed via Libsyn. And, and you know, there may be people that don't like the banter, that really like the stories, right. and like the sound effects and the readings and all that, and they don't want to stick around for that. So that's a question. What, what yeah. about those people? Maybe Do they I just delete just say those episodes when they come along, and so they're just like, screw that. I guess we could possibly start a completely separate feed and do that, or we could just include it in the regular feed and perhaps, I don't know, what it would cost to get a little bit extra space. Or maybe we could keep it only on the blog like we've been doing now and pay a little extra to get a better box.net account. Or okay. maybe something else. Maybe somebody out there. And this is something that I, we, ne we never mentioned this on our Everybody Please Volunteer for Us episode. <laughs> but maybe there's somebody who wants to be our webmaster kind of a guy and set up a great site and... There's got to be a bet. I think I've heard other people that just do it in a different way. They have their website with a certain setup. They don't use a thing like Libsyn to put their files on. They just put their files onto their website and they create their own feed and they write it with WordPress. I think you can do that, but I've never. Now, see, you set up the site. The site that you see at, at dunesteef.com was all something that Big did in his spare time with no training, <laughs> uh, with no shows. weapons. And no training. Why don't you put her in charge? Game over, man. It's game over. Now, see what I did? I did the same thing you complained about on that other podcast. <laughs> and yet I think it's amusing. And so it's sort of a basic thing. I think it's totally ac uh, adequate. I almost said cromulent, too. <laughs> it is cromulent um, it, as I, well. It's, it's damn cromulent. It's acrylent. Acrylic. 
Acri- acri- okay. Acrimonious. That there you go. Help. I'm talking about the website. It's we- totally, completely adequate. It is adequate. And, and and I've always been one of those guys that thinks that the content is more important than the, the paint job. You know, the car getting you there is better than – what's a nice plate with nothing on it? Mm-hmm. I have no idea what that cliche means, but I wholeheartedly believe in that. But if there's somebody out there that says, you know what? In 10 minutes, I could make your pod- your podcast sound less shitty. No, in 10 <laughs> minutes, I could make your website – more user friendly. I could make it look better. I could make you know, etc. Yeah, et you could put the files on there and make the feed for you so that it doesn't have to cost you extra money to add this get my goat thing to it. Maybe there's somebody out there that's all for that. We didn't even know how to make the blog be a part of Dreamsteef.com. <laughs> we had right. to create a second website blog, yeah. and link to it. And so yeah, if somebody out there knows the answers to these and many questions and and who wrote the book of love? These are three questions that we need answered. Uh please let us know. But the primary question that we are asking is what do we do about that gets my goat? There are a comment section. I want everybody to tell me whether they like that gets my goat, whether they weren't aware of that gets my goat and uh you know, should we continue things exactly the, the way they were? Is it worth the extra money for us to include it in the regular feed? How would you like us to proceed? It will remain one way or another. It's just what you think we should do with it. And see, it's much easier for me to put together a That Gets My Goat because the sound effects are minimal. We never use other people's voices. I think Announcer Man has been in the room a couple times when we did it. Obviously, the ghosts were present. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I can do That Gets My Goat in a third of the time that it takes us to do a regular episode. And so chances are you'd get a lot of That Gets My Goats if it were in the regular feed. Uh-huh. And, and maybe people think that that was cool. Maybe that's a, a plus. I don't know. It's hard to say. Norm Sherman over the Drabblecast, and I make no bones about the fact that this podcast is a giant ripoff of Drabblecast. Because <laughs> you wouldn't clean your room. Daddy drinks because you cry. Was it mommy left because you wouldn't clean your room? Grandpa died. Was that right? I Grandpa died? Something like that. Because of how much you whine. <laughs> and daddy drinks because you cry. He has... A secondary podcast. He may have a tertiary podcast for all I, I know. I think he does. That uh, Beast Master, Beasts. Holy cow. Beasts. But, but he doesn't put mega all beasts. of those on the, the Mega Beasts are on a separate feed. It doesn't matter what it's called. No one listens. <laughs> he has these other feeds. And in case you know people are offended by anal rape... And so, <laughs> who would be offended by that? Seriously, what? Yeah, kind according of, to Abby, what kind of nobody has shelled person? Should I just delete all the <laughs> Drabblecast stuff? You can do what you like. Well, he's got the B sides as a separate. What is it? Is it a feed? Yeah. So you can subscribe to Drabblecast and B sides and probably Mega Beast Death uh-huh. Match and Robot Super Monkey Team, etc. That word. And so maybe we could do that, but. Mm-hmm. He's also just got loads of money. I mean, it's scads of I mean, The amount that I feel sorry for myself, think of that in terms of like dollar bills. That's oh. what Norm Sherman has. Wow, really? Yes, he's a corporate fat cat Holy in the world cow. of podcasting. That's a lot of money. It is. I'm feeling the, sorrier for the, myself just thinking of Norm rolling around wow. buck naked in just <laughs> dollar bill. He's getting paper cuts in extraordinary <laughs> places. Not extraordinary. Well, if you've seen. All right. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Okay, that was, once again, we went to that well, yes. So, Can't be the last. So, <laughs> we could do all sorts of different things and tell us what you think maybe the best route would be. But before you jaunt off to do that comment, why don't we give them a taste, in case they've not heard it before, of what that get my, of what that gets my goat might entail. You have a special goat that has been gotten and you've been saving it. You've been holding it in, pent up, waiting for that explosion to happen. And now it's time for the explosion. What got your goat that you've been so upset about? Well, it's mostly just you building it up much bigger, much (laughs) more impressively than it ever could be. (laughs) 
But, you know, a, a, a lot of times I'm usually upset about something going on in the entertainment industry because right. that's where my interests lie. And, you know, just last week I saw a trailer for a new or an upcoming Liam Neeson movie, and it's called Unknown. Okay. Now, it was originally called Unknown White Male, but apparently the same spin doctors that changed Rapunzel to Tangled, <laughs> that changed the death and life of Charlie St. Cloud to Charlie St. Cloud, decided Unknown White Male is too specific. Let's just call it Unknown. So fuck well, that- those guys. But second... <laughs> That is uh, definitely not specific. I saw the trailer, and it's no. Let's see the ghosts. They they don't like the the insults toward Liam Neeson. Now I love Mr. Neeson. I would have his baby, but okay. This is in no way an insult to <laughs> sure to be Sir Liam Neeson someday soon. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm sure you'll probably not be able to fit that in anyways because it'd be all weird. Yeah, well, that's what she says. Basically, to tell you what the movie is about in a non-specific way as I can. An unknown way? Yes, there you go. (laughs) I see what you've done there. Okay, he's a doctor, like a a surgeon or something like that, and he goes overseas with his ridiculously hot young wife, played by January Jones, and he's in Europe somewhere. No. uh, January Jones is a person's name? That can get your goat. Let me finish. Uh, Okay, sorry. And... Something happens, and he wakes up to find that nobody knows who he is, that nobody has any record that he is who he says he was. He has no ID. He runs into his wife, and she doesn't know who he is. And her husband steps out and says, what's all this about? And this is the surgeon, the famous doctor. And so Liam Neeson needs to find some proof that he is who he says he is and find out what's going on. Is there a conspiracy? Maybe he's been hypnotized. Maybe he's had some brain damage. Maybe he's mad. Maybe all of this was a dream, et cetera, et cetera. But the trailer goes on and the trailer explains exactly what's going on. And the trailer explains how he is able to prove what's going on. (laughs) And the trailer explains what was going on with his wife, who the bad guys are and why. (laughs) The end Don't go see Unknown in 2011. (laughs) Now, you can tell what's getting my goat because you hear me complain about this every time we see a trailer. Yes. But whoever these people are, the the marketing people, they must think people are friggin' stupid, stupid, man. man. Oh, yeah. Because it's it's like they'll say a film by Martin Scorsese and a voice says a film by Martin Martin Scorsese, Scorsese, The Departed. And a voice says, the departed. departed. Because so few people can read. But this was the the most egregious example. I had held the Sixth Sense trailer that says, I can tell you what my secret is now. I see dead people. And then Bruce Willis says, I think these people, they need your help. I, I, I don't think they mean to scare you. I think if you help them, then they'll be able to move on. And then Haley Joel Osment helps somebody, and you see the friggin' ghost move on as the worst example of a trailer <laughs> ruining a movie and spoiling the ending and make it entirely unimportant that you go see it. Because you've seen the trailer. You can tell anybody what happens in The Sixth Sense. <laughs> Except for that one last little, what a twist at the end. At least they did keep that out. Oh, okay, good point. Or the, uh, the What Lies Beneath trailer where it goes all the way to almost the very end of the movie <laughs> or worst of all the double jeopardy trailer oh yes. w- that ends with her saying there's this there's thing, this thing called, called double jeopardy, jeopardy. I, could I could shoot you shoot in the you middle in of the mardi, mardi gras, gras and nobody, nobody could do anything do about, anything about, about it, it which a tells that her husband didn't really die two tells that she gets out of prison three tells that she confronts her husband with this news at some point in the movie and i've seen the movie it, it happens was the very at the last end 10 seconds of the or, or, or I, I, that's an exaggeration 42 seconds of the movie. Let's rewind it and make sure exactly. Anyway, I hate that so, so much when they spoil a movie or where they feel like they have to tell the exact beginning, middle, and end for people even to go see the movie. It's like, we wouldn't want audiences to wonder if they get together in the end. We wouldn't want audiences to wonder if it has a happy ending. We wouldn't want an audience to wonder if there's full frontal nudity or not. We've got to put <laughs> well, it all in the trailer. we don't want to wonder about that. 
I want to be assured the full frontal nudity. I, I bitched about it on the show before that in the olden days, when there would be a horror movie or a monster movie or whatever, they, they would keep the, the monster, monster back from the commercials and all that. They want you to go see the movie so you can see what the thing looks like. You know, it's like, ooh, you know, let's leave a little mystique. That's the word. Let's leave a little bit so the audience is hungry for more. So they. But can now, when they do the X Men trailer, they showed mystique. They they did. <laughs> Think about the trailer for The Negotiator. Do you remember that flick? Okay, it was a movie with Samuel L. Jackson and Kevin Spacey. Okay. Where Samuel L. Jackson was a police negotiator. Uh -huh. that, you know, when there was a hostage crisis or some kind of terrorist threat, he would talk to them and say, what do you want? And what can we... Hey, calm down. Mother... He would. He was like, oh, we got to get this negotiation under the way, mother... <laughs> Anyhow. He... Please stay calm, mother... That's right. It's no, like, whoa, continue whoa. with your church service, mother... And it's like, whoa, whoa, Sam, this is really not helping. Swearing at this guy on the other end of the line is going to make him shoot a few more people. The safety's on your <laughs> pistol, mother... Okay. This, this was a trailer about this guy being like the best there is, or second best maybe there is, as, as, as hostage negotiating. And then he is framed for a crime that they show in the trailer. And he has to go on the run. And he decides... To take a bunch of people hostage so that he can Negotiate let people know what happened, out. the truth. And Kevin Spacey comes in, who is the number one negotiator in the country or in the city. He's going to try and talk some sense into Samuel L. Jackson. And then the trailer ends with both of them on the same side. Him having convinced Kevin Spacey that he's telling the truth. Now you've got to negotiate with both of us. Motherfucker. <laughs> and, you know, that's maybe not the worst example. The others were far worse. But that doesn't happen until nearly the end of the movie. And all the suspense of, will they believe him? Will one of these snipers kill Samuel L. Jackson? Maybe Kevin Spacey is in on it. Maybe he's a bad guy. Yeah. And all that stuff, that's all gone. And I'm sure that the filmmakers intended for there to be questions and for there to be suspense and for there to be people wondering and whispering and saying, I think he's the killer. And all that stuff that happens in good movies when you're in involved yeah they needed to start trailers out now with a big warning spoiler alert <laughs> warning movie spoilers if you're planning on seeing this movie please avoid the trailer <laughs> i'm not entirely ignorant i'm like 84 percent when you say yeah i ignorant. think i think a little further and you'd be a complete ignoramus but you're just kind of ignorant right now see i came so close to making a harold ramus joke just then but i didn't do it it's for you it's all for you okay damien i'm not completely ignorant that you have to sell these movies you have to get people to want to go to them so sometimes you got to put the funniest part in sometimes you got to put the biggest set piece the best fart joke sometimes the only fart joke in finding nemo's case you've got to let people know that, hey there's going to be buttloads of cg you have to let people know that yes the girl and the guy are gonna kiss even if they don't kiss until the end but some of it is just insulting. Some of it is worse than coddling, worse than hand-holding. It's just, what's the word when you think you're so much smarter than the person you're talking to and you talk down to them? Condescending? There you go. That's what it is. We could go on and on about this. It looks like we're out of time. Wait, we will still go on. Yeah, we can go can on Can you and think on. of any examples? Do, do you feel insulted when you see this happen? Or do you feel the need to just skip the movie altogether when you see this happen? Have you seen this happen? It's not something that has gotten my goat before, but I totally can see what you're saying. And it's like trying to tell somebody what your idea is for your story or something like that without giving it away. You have a story idea, you want to get somebody interested in it. It's like writing a blurb or ad copy or something like that. You know, the, the little bit that you put on the back of a book. It's kind of like a trailer for a book. You know, this is what people are going to pick up. They're going to be like, oh, uh, Death Train. What's this about? They're not just going to like, well, a picture has a train and a skull on it. Well, I guess I'll buy it then. They're going to turn it over and they're going to look at the back and they're going to read the... In a world where one man is king. I'm wanting to see this Death Train movie. That's the kind of thing that you should have in your trailer up to the certain point. But yeah, you got to... Leave the mystery, or why do you need to see it? You're like, oh, I've seen that. There was this guy that I went to school with, and he would always use the punchline to ask somebody if they had heard the joke. Have you heard the train is going through the tunnel? Have you heard Death by Buddha? 
Have you heard, you think you're scared. I got to walk through these woods alone. Have you heard that joke? And, and the disdain with which I would watch this guy ask that question and then try and tell the joke. It, it's like, it's, wow, it would have been funny had I not known the end already. Right, and that's how I feel about these trailers. Now, sometimes, like when there's a comedy and they use the only funny scenes in the whole movie, I understand why they do that. It doesn't mean that I respect them for it or think that it's okay, but if a movie but, is really yeah. weak and you've got three funny parts, you why not use them? Yeah. Use them? But, but it's just such an irritation when you see those three parts. You go, oh, it was really funny. You go to watch the movie and you're like, those are the only three funny parts. I wish that I had known that the rest of it was going to suck because then I wouldn't have wasted my money. But they succeeded in that case to get you out. Whereas what they're doing here is going to do the opposite. You're going to watch it and you're like, oh, I guess I've seen that movie. I know what happens. I know that maybe I'm not a typical film goer, but I am the one that they should be aiming for. The guy that goes and sees things on opening night, the guy that buys the DVDs, the guy that tells his friends about what movies they need to see and what they need to avoid. Maybe not. Maybe I'm, you know how credit card companies look at the guy who pays off his card, the entire balance every month as like deadbeats or <laughs> fucktards or, or whatever word <laughs> they have in the corporate parlance to describe these people that they don't parlance. want. Parlance, wow. You'd think who would, they would want are people that pay their bills on time, but that's not what they no, want. No, they want the people that are going to give them money. And so maybe that's not. Maybe they want the ignorant to go see these movies, the people that go on a Friday night and don't even know what's playing and are just standing at the box office and looking at what's about to start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and that may be the case. I weep if that's the case, but I understand that money is the overriding concern. It is. Stuff. If that's how they think they're going to get the money, then I guess uh, that's a way to do it. I mean, these days, things have changed. You don't have movies very often. I mean, it's like once every three or four years that you have a movie like Back to the Future, which is the record holder for the movie that made a hundred million dollars, but took the longest to get there. You know, it's one of those movies where it opened and then some people went and saw it and they told their friends and more people went and saw it and they told their friends and more people went and saw it. And it, because it was so good, built and built and made more and more money every week and became one of those kind of events, one of those phenomenons. Whereas these days, it's the exact opposite. It's all advertising. It's all first weekend. You better have made your 150 that first weekend because otherwise you're not making anything because people aren't going to see the movie that came out last week. They're only going to see the movie that came out this week. And that just seems to be all they're after now. Well, I don't understand how that can be the mindset. If you're a film studio, which would you rather have put out? The Sorcerer's Apprentice that came out this summer or Inception that came out this summer? Everybody would say Inception, a movie that everybody talked about that people are like, hey, Grandma, you got to go see this movie. At three weeks later, as many people are going to see it as went and saw it when it first came out, that kind of movie with staying power, people are going to buy friggin' Inception. And I'm not saying they're not going to buy Sorcerer's Apprentice. Maybe there are idiots <laughs> that are going to buy it because it says Disney or because it says Nicolas Cage or just because it says Apprentice on there and they want to <laughs> learn what that means. <laughs> But Inception is going to be remembered a year from now, and Sorcerer's Apprentice we saw, and we don't even remember it. Like, I remember how weird the audience was that we saw it with, though. How much they laughed at it, and we're just like, what in the hell is going on here? These you know, jokes aren't funny. What is going on? Maybe these are the people that they want to go see their movie. Maybe that audience, when they went and saw Inception, would just be like, I, I don't get it, would be my uncle's child bride. It's like, what is this movie about? He's like, honey, it just started. Who's in this movie? The credits are about to roll. You'll find out as soon as I do. It's like, what's this movie rated? I don't remember. He's like, how long is this movie? I'll tell you when it's over. You know, just this kind of stuff. Three hours, 42 minutes, 15 seconds. That audience that we saw Sorcerer's Apprentice with might not have enjoyed Inception. It might have required too much concentration, too I much guess, yeah. stopping the texting and, and watching the screen. It may be that if you offer them the option of buying Sorcerer's Apprentice and buying Inception, they go with Sorcerer's Apprentice. I don't know. And you know what? Maybe I'm being too cruel, too hard on <laughs> Sorcerer's Apprentice. But of those movies of its ilk that I saw this summer, 
it was the weakest. Uh -huh. And I'm using it as an example. I mean, I could say Prince of Persia, if you like, because Prince of Persia had a lot of the same problems. It opened in almost the same way. It dropped off a lot slower than Sorcerer's Apprentice did. I mean, Sorcerer's Apprentice is, is a much bigger failure, I guess. Okay. But again, everybody wants that movie. They don't even care about Sunday. It's all Friday and Saturday grosses <laughs> and to hell with the rest of the run. You know, if the industry continues the way it is right now, 20 years from now, a movie will open on Friday. It will be available on Tuesday at the Red Box, on streaming, at whatever you watch movies on. Right. And they'll not care because the people that wanted to see it in the theater saw it in the first two days. And then, you know, everybody else sees it on video. That, that's where we're headed right now. Seems like um, it. And I'm sorry. And that's, that's a different thing. I, what I really just wanted to complain about was the trailers that feel like they need to spoon feed the entire story for you. It's like, hey, hey, hey. Nothing unknown here, yeah. despite the terrible title. <laughs> and I, I'm I'm sorry. I hey, you were passionate, man. That's that's what matters. I was, and I can complain about anything, really. The problem is, I wanted to see that movie, and now I don't feel like I have to. Mm -hmm. If my mom said, "Oh, what's unknown about?" I think I could tell her the whole movie, so, having not right. seen the movie. So it's this, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then at the end, he finds out this, and then that, what's happened. And I owe people an apology. If you haven't seen the trailer, if there, somehow you would have avoided it, and I've spoiled things, but believe me, the TV spots are going to say the exact same thing, or, or reveal even more, because they only have 15 seconds to tell you. Right. It's like, okay, screw the middle. This is the beginning, this is the end. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, Ashley Judd. Judd. I could shoot I could you in the shoot middle shoot of Mardi Gras, Gras and nobody could do anything about it. About it. Double, Jeopardy, Double Jeopardy opening Friday. Friday. <laughs> wow, that's what they focused on. Yeah. All right, so I guess that's been Gets My Goat for this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. And feel free to pop in to the comments on this particular episode. It'll be up on the main page, so you can leave your comments there. And let us know what you think. Should we keep it around on the main feed like we did today? Should we start a new feed, like a B-sides feed to put it on? Should we continue to just hide it away on the blog? It's all up to you, folks. It's all for you. Look at me, Damien. All right. Thanks for listening, folks. Good night. That could have been good, but it sure wasn't. The Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine is published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. This means that you can share the Dune Steve with anyone you'd like, but you can't sell or change the files. See you later, everybody.